you self-identify as a geek or not, this video is for you. If you are uh, interested in an in-depth weather forecast analysis for the Mahoning and Shenango Valleys in eastern Ohio and western PA, I'm 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm. We do this video every day during the, uh, during the week, and sometimes these videos are kind of short when there's not much to talk about. Sometimes they can be pretty long, and this evening we have no shortage of things to talk about. So buckle up, we're going to talk about the potential for some icing tomorrow morning, and then of course the longer range thoughts as we get a little bit closer to Christmas. We had an incoming canopy of clouds at daybreak to today as the sun peaked above the horizon. Uh, they lit up, or the sun lit up, I should say, the uh, bottom of this canopy of clouds made for a really nice sunrise this morning. Quick time lapse from our Youngstown camera, though, for the most part, clouds were the flavor of the day today. We did have a little bonus sunshine for a time in areas, especially north of Interstate 80 this afternoon, but for the most part, it was just kind of a humdrum, stereotypical December day with seasonable temperatures. In fact, 39 is exactly where we should be on the 14th day of December. 26 is our average low at this time of the year, and 24 was our low first thing this morning. All right, it's been an active day for our neighbors to the south. It's been an active couple of days thanks to this low pressure system spinning across the middle of the country. This has been producing blizzard conditions up here. Yesterday's severe weather was out here. Today the severe weather has been farther to the east across the lower Mississippi Valley. They had a tornado in the New Orleans area earlier on this afternoon, early this evening, and several reports of tornadic thunderstorms in Louisiana and Mississippi over the last handful of hours. Very dynamic mid-latitude cyclone moving through the middle of the country. And this is the same system that will bring us a soggy and cold day tomorrow and the potential for some slick surfaces. Now, locally, uh, we do have winter storm or uh, winter weather advisories, I should say, for Mercer County up to Crawford and Erie counties in northwest PA, over into uh, Butler County as well. Farther to the east in Pennsylvania, these uh, winter weather advisories actually become ice storm warnings and winter storm warnings. If you get deep enough into PA, it's going to be more snow than ice. But either way, travel's going to be tricky. Thursday, Thursday night, uh, the farther east you head into the Keystone State. And if you're doing some traveling on Interstate 80 tomorrow or across the PA Turnpike eastbound through Pennsylvania, be ready for some tough sledding. The icing uh, around our television viewing area will be minor by comparison, but there may be some exceptions. Now, for in our Ohio counties, uh, maybe a couple of, of the coldest surfaces pick up a little bit of a glaze. It'll be right around 32, though. You have a better chance of seeing maybe 30 degrees in rain as you go off into Mercer County, PA. Uh, so especially around and east of I-79. So over towards uh, Fredonia, Mercer, Sandy Lake, Grove City, Slippery Rock, and uh, points to the east. And especially, once again, once you get over towards Dubois and some of the higher terrain in, uh, in uh, the I-80 corridor in Pennsylvania. This could be much more problematic. But again, we're looking for trace amounts at worst of icing in most of our Ohio counties. But be cognizant tomorrow morning. If you're traveling Route 11, 680, 711, especially over bridges, especially in areas that may not be treated that much and it's going to be rain, so treatment won't do a whole lot of good anyway. Uh, just be cognizant that there might be an isolated slick spot, but I'm not real concerned about high impacts in most of our Ohio counties. Now, you know, most of us don't really know what a tenth of an inch of ice looks like or a quarter of an inch of ice. All of us have a pretty good idea what three inches of snow looks like or six inches of snow. Um, but when it comes to ice accretion um, on tree limbs, on power lines, on car windshields, things like that, nuisance amounts can be up to a tenth to even two tenths of an inch. But once you get up into that quarter of an inch range, that tends to be where you see bigger impacts, uh, travel difficulties, and it's going to be possible that we reach that threshold tomorrow again, around and east of I-79 over in Mercer County. Now, the threat for icing on Thursday morning will be during the early morning hours. I think over in Mercer County and eastern Lawrence County, the threat will be over by midday, and it's just going to be kind of a crummy rest of our Thursday with a chilly rain shower from time to time. That system uh, pulls to the east on Friday. We'll get into more of the cyclonic flow as this low-pressure system still spins over the uh, western Great Lakes. And it'll cloud back up on Friday. There could be a stray flurry, but I think there'll be some sunny breaks on Friday as well. The true blustery and colder weather will wait until the weekend. It's going to be a biting wind on Saturday with uh, snow flurries here and there. Really not expecting any accumulations, though. All right, let's look ahead to next week. Uh, one thing I didn't mention uh, real quickly, it'll actually get kind of windy at times tonight into tomorrow. But that's kind of a secondary concern compared to the threat for some icing. All right, end of next week. We're... 9 to 10 days out, uh, probably about 9 days out 
from a big time pattern change. Yes, it's going to be colder this weekend, but it's really going to be colder by next weekend, right around Christmas time. And, you know, we're starting to see pretty good model agreement that some sort of impacts when it comes to snow will be felt at the end of next week. It's way too early to talk about specifics in terms of exact timing, amounts, things like that. Today's only Wednesday. We're talking about probably next Thursday night into Friday. But, you know, we're in range now of a lot of uh, crummy weather apps where you pull up 10 days from now and you can get a snow accumulation forecast on that app. Uh, just because it's there doesn't mean you should use it. Uh, you know, Burger King sells a quadruple cheeseburger, I'm sure. That doesn't mean I should go out and eat it tonight. Uh, and it's the same thing with, with these apps. They're convenient. Uh, that information is there for you to consume if, if you choose to, but uh, it's not always a wise decision. What we can say is about eight or nine days ahead of time, confidence is pretty high that Thursday night and Friday next week, somewhere in that vicinity, there's going to be a pretty good low pressure system moving through the eastern U.S. with probably some high impacts depending on the track across a lot of the eastern U.S., east of the Mississippi, including around here. Um, there's higher confidence, a higher degree of confidence that the cold is coming and it's going to be our coldest Christmas in a while. It's possible that Christmas Day will be our coldest since 2004. We might not see much uh, a temperature much above 20 on Christmas Day, somewhere in that neighborhood. Overnight lows might be in the single digits. Um, so high confidence in cold, lower confidence in snow details, but the timing, we're starting to become a little more confident that this is going to be mostly focused on sometime later Thursday to Thursday night and Friday. So keep that in mind if you have travel plans. If you have people coming into town for Christmas and their flight is Friday the 23rd, and I suspect the airports will be very busy that day. This could be a high impact day in some of our regional airports coming up two days before Christmas. And because of the threat of wintry weather before Christmas, even though again the odds are very, ha or the uh, details are hazy at this point, the odds of a white Christmas, one inch or more of snow on the ground Christmas morning they're increasing up to 75%. That's about 30% higher than our historical odds across our region. And just a reminder, in case you're new to this idea, uh, the generally accepted uh, definition of a white Christmas is an inch or more of snow on the ground Christmas morning. It doesn't have to be snowing on Christmas Day. You just need one inch or more on the ground Christmas morning to qualify for a white Christmas. All right, tomorrow evening on Weather for Weather Geeks and on 21 News at 6 and 11, I'll be updating my annual winter forecast. Now that we're halfway through December in the first month of meteorological winter, we're going to do a little uh, status update on, on the forecast and see if we need to change anything from our original forecast put out on November 17th. So look forward to that tomorrow evening right here on this video and on the same feed on my social media and on YouTube as well. That'll be the last weather for Weather Geeks until after Christmas because starting Friday I have some time off through Christmas. But with the potential weather next week, I have a feeling I'm not going to be able to relax a whole lot on my on my week off. I, I think I'll be pretty plugged into the weather most of the week and you can probably look for some updates on social media for me even though I won't be on 21 News in the evenings next week. I, uh, I have a sneaking suspicion given the way uh, this pattern looks to unfold that I'm going to have a hard time disconnecting. So anyway, thanks for watching this evening. Make sure you're following me on all my social media, and I'll see you back here on Thursday.